Shall I tell you why I started waving my hands? Yella, do you know why I started waving my hands? Because when you go live, the camera seems to capture the very first thing you do when you are going live. And sometimes it's not your best look. It's a waving, smiling look. And they are using it as a trend now. But that's what I started for. Sometimes I'll be on my phone and the life has started and I just look one kind. So I just said, you know what? Let me just create a smile. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. How are you doing? Stay blessed. What did I tell you? Trouble is waiting for you. So, um, first of all, good morning. Let us start with a prayer. Should religion and politics mix? Should the church and the state mix? Peter Obi was seen going to church, and today I'm going to give you my scriptural explanation to why I support what Peter Obi did. But of course, I'm going to also tell you the downsides scripturally and historically of mixing church with politics. So I'm going to start first of all with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving us the opportunity to gather. I thank you for giving us the strength of character. I thank you for giving us the need to seek you. I thank you, Father, for your mercies and endure. I thank you for your love and loving kindness. I thank you for your direction and your peace. And I ask for wisdom today as we walk with you in Yahushua's name I pray. And everybody said amen, amen. Do I have an amen? Can I have a louder amen? Amen. Can I have a louder amen? Amen. Thank you. All right. So first things first, um, let me address something. A lot of people don't know what the church is. Uh, many people seem to mistake the church for a building. Many people seem to find solace in a Sunday ritual. Whether you like it or not, what is a ritual? Let me hear that louder. A spiritual ceremony, you're correct. Something you do repeatedly. A ritual. And, and there's always been this narrative that do not neglect the gathering of the brethren. Much of today's church is based upon the teachings of Paul and I worry a lot about the teachings of Paul because people tend to take his advice as instructions because it suits their motives. Paul said do not neglect the gathering of the brethren, encourage one another. He did not say if you neglect it you go to hellfire. He did not say if you neglect it God will not love you. I don't know who I'm connecting with this morning. There was never a time when scripture said, if you don't gather with the brethren, you will not make heaven. As a matter of fact, there are clear examples of people who are on their own and God sent his messengers to them. An example was the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. Um, this guy in Acts chapter 10, uh, what's his name again? Let me just quickly open Acts chapter 10. Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. 
Cornelius was minding his business, doing his good deeds and praying to God. And God now sent Peter to him. You see, the notion of organized religion, of people gathering in God's name, is not bad. But you see, just as with everything human, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and everything changes. Have you ever tried adding curry to a native soup? A native Nigerian soup, like afang, or a dikai kong, or river's native soup. Babes, can you add curry to those soups? Hell no. There are some native soups that you cannot even add garlic. It onions, will, onions will take the taste off. So it all starts with a little garlic, a little onion, and afang doesn't taste the same again. Bless you, my brother, Black Mentor. Big shout out to Black Mentor. Black Mentor supported our charity um, this day before yesterday. You can see the videos on my Instagram account, and I will talk about it at the end of the service and give appreciation and gratitude to those who have helped us like the black mentor big shout out also to my brother pastor toby adeboega who supported the previous charity uh, and uh, the entirety of the wealth nation i love you guys so let me go back to where i was before black mentor interrupted me where was i a little bit of garlic and a little bit of onion and i found it spoiled and that's what I've noticed with religion. I went to church for 20 years. No, no, no. I started going to church in about 2003. No, officially I joined a church. Typing types. I never became a worker or anything like that. I didn't see the need to. And I sit down today. And I cannot point to a single thing I learned in 15 years. Between 2002 to 2016. About 14 years. And there is not one single thing that I learned. Nothing. I cannot point to something. What I can say is, okay... My pastor used to look good, so it's good to look good. But I can learn that in business school. I used to have a boss in Cool FM that his beard, one is never taller than the other. He's always prim and proper like a, like, a, like a movie star. I could have learned that from work. I sit back today and think about 14 years of my life and do you know what I learned? I learned how to let religion traumatize me. I developed a psychological disease called religious trauma syndrome. I learned, I took years to unlearn what was put in me by the church system. I'll take this a little further. It's like saying... I don't want to take the smallpox vaccine because if I get smallpox and survive, I'm never going to have smallpox again, which is true. If you've ever had smallpox before, you're never going to have it again. But do you really want to go through having smallpox and surviving it when you could just take a shot? We're not talking about chicken pox here. Chicken pox, I didn't take the vaccine. I had the chicken pox. It's annoying. It will scratch your body. You will have a fever. But you are not going to die. Smallpox, on the other hand, is going to leave dead. If you see someone that survives smallpox, just by looking at their face, you know. Their face is going to have little, little dents. We used to have a goalkeeper, a Nigerian goalkeeper, that had smallpox as a child. When you see their face, you will see it. Now, a lot of people say, let your children go to church, whatever they learn, and it's not good, you help them unlearn. 
It's the equivalent of letting your children have smallpox just so that they can know how smallpox feels because you want them to have that experience. I'm going to tell you the truth here. Yeah? Whether you like it or not, someone said chicken pox is crazy. Try smallpox. Chicken pox is a drink in a bar compared to smallpox. Smallpox was so bad that he was worshipped as a god in Africa. The shrine is still in Ibadan. Shopono, that's what it's called. You see, I sat down and I thought about it. What is it that I learned in church? Nothing. I had to work on myself. And I'm one person who is a DIY person. I am a DIY person. I know how to fix things on my car, not because I went to any mechanic college, because I just look at it and figure it out or watch a YouTube video or ask my mechanic or ask a few friends. Same thing with scriptures. And one beautiful thing with scriptures is all you need to do is have intention and have the want to seek God. That's all. God will start revealing himself. You, you're going to start seeing things by yourself. Things are going to come to you. Someone said DIY, do it yourself. That's the meaning of DIY. Once you start a journey with God, you, he's going to begin showing you little by little, little by little, little by little, till your cup becomes full of his things. A lot of people now are saying, oh, all these online churches, all these online... Let me tell you, my younger sister is doing very well in the UK. She works from home. She doesn't work from home part-time. Her job is from home 24 hours, as in the whole year. She got a better job that still requires her to work from home permanently. So if you can work from home, why can't you church from home? It's a question I've always asked. One of the most difficult things to do from home is the radio. My last two years on radio, I worked from home. At that blessing, I saw her here. Ada, are you in the house with us? God bless you, my darling sister. I worked from home. And Ada is here to bear me witness if, I, if she's still here. My show was number one in the whole radio station, number one, and I was doing it from home. Oh yes, there were quality issues, quality issues that we could have fixed. If they and I were ready to put investments through, we could have said, okay, you know what, let's invest two million naira. Daddy, please, inside this two million, how much are you going to bring? Because the studio is going to end up being yours. You just give us a place in your house, we'll soundproof it, we'll give you this, 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 we have this equipment, two million naira will fix it. I wasn't ready to spend two million naira. They weren't ready to spend two million naira, and the ratings were number one anyway. So, why hassle? But I could have given you radio broadcast standard quality from home with an investment of two million. We had a great show. Ada was on ground. I was in my bedroom. And the callers were, there was never a time, even, you know, it takes a while for your ratings to rise to number one. There was never a time our show did poorly. Never. It was always top three, top four, then second, then one time it just went to first, bam, and stayed at first till I left. One of the reasons I even left was now that it's first, it's good to leave when you are on top. So what am I trying to say? If my sister, who's a lawyer who works for a company, can work from home and I can anchor a show. And that blessing was here. She's here, my darling sister. God loves you, darling. Love you too, babes. She was here a few minutes ago. She could bear me witness. If I lie, Ada will judge me. We they do meetings together. Then they greet us when we come first. They are ah, that the freeze. Once again, you've tried. So, what is it in religion that you cannot learn from home? And a lot of people will misquote Paul and Paul's teachings, which, if you ask me, are the bane of Christianity. The scripture do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. 
If you read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, here's what Paul really said that they are misquoting and twisting. He said, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Let us gather together and encourage one another. My problem with gathering is the way you think. I remember as a project in sociology, I was trying to sample different opinions. And then there was an art convention in the University of Ibadan. And artists from all over the world came. There were Hausas. As in, when I say Hausa artists, I don't mean a, a proper conch Hausa that struggles to speak English. A Yoruba artist that when you hear his English, you hear the big, big, bo, bo, bo inside. An Igbo artist that cannot say freeze, he will say fleas. Where are you? Then there were some British, some American, and some Indians. And I went to meet them once. And I said, please, for my school, I want to gather a few people. I don't know if you, I don't know how I was able to share beg them. So I was able to gather an Indian, an American, a British guy or lady, I've forgotten, a Hausa, an Igbo, and a Yoruba. And my project was to see their interpretation of ideas was to give them the exact same assignment, but in such a way that they can never be close to each other. And the, 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 what I told them to do was draw a rich man. No two drawings were the same. The American guy was from the hood. He literally draw, drew a guy with chains on his neck. I don't want to use the H word. <laughs> but some garden tools. A convertible in the back. The British lady drew a man in a suit holding a briefcase, crossing his legs and leaning against a car. <laughs> The Yoruba man drew a man in flowing agbada that looks like he can fly with it. With three women following him, yellow and plump, wearing the same agbada that he was wearing. Once you look at it, it is the rich man, Babake, and his three wives. And by the time I was done, I understood that if the interpretation of something as simple as a rich man can be so diverse by a population, only imagine Bible that was written before your father's father's father was born. Things your parents, there are things my parents used to talk about that I could not phantom. There are things that my children those people that date young children, I clap for them. I can barely understand my children without throwing them off a balcony. Let them know to be in a relationship with a child. All who now, when they marry small, small children, I hear you now. Una they try, oh. Una go run mad. All you need is 10 years, no, not more, 10 years in between. Una no go fit cope. Unless that person is particular, the younger one is particularly old and the older one is particularly childish. Then the two of you now meet somewhere around five years. Let alone something that was written in a time when you have no inkling or idea of. And interpretation is what puts us in trouble. This guy said gathering of the brethren, but when you see gathering of the brethren, what comes to your mind? When you close your eyes, imagine, I've told you this thing. Imagine somebody knocked the door. Imagine, right? Somebody knocked our door downstairs now. Imagine somebody's not at the door. What do you imagine? Describe the person at the door. Security. Security. Describe the person at the door. In your mind, whatever comes into your mind. Security. You, the door, knock on the door. What comes to your mind? Yes. Delivery. So when the Bible is abstract, now knocking on the door, why did any of you not 
Think of vampire. Because vampires don't exist in this dispensation, right? They are not a conversation, right? Why didn't you think of Fulani bandits or bandits? Let me not put it on any tribe. Why did you not think of that? Because since you've lived in this house, no bandit has ever knocked. Why didn't you think of Oloshu? Hmm? Why? You think of things that your society or your reality or your situation has projected into your mind. Right? I want to say something and I want all of you to work with me. Think, 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 think. A woman. What is she wearing? A woman in your mind. What is she wearing? Turtle neck and big bow. What is the woman wearing? A satin dress. What is the woman wearing? A, a short dress. Total neck, satin dress, short dress. Your mind is so powerful that it represents and interprets everything submitted to it according to your understanding. Why did none of you think of a woman tying her body with a camel hair like John the Baptist in the Bible? Why? So when you hear the gathering of the brethren, the first thing that comes to your mind is church. Society and religion have beamed this into your mind unconsciously. When you hear the gathering of the brethren, what comes to your mind? Where do the brethren gather? Christian brethren, where do they gather? Fellowship, church. But you see, what you don't realize is, if you read Matthew chapter 18, verse 20, the scripture says, For where two or three gather in my name, I am there with them. Two or three people gather in my name, I'm there with them. Which means that two or three people can gather under a mango tree at 1 a.m. at night. As long as they call Yahushua, he is there. They can gather by the beach at 1 p.m. on a Tuesday afternoon. Under a tree at 1 a.m. on Friday night. By the side of the road at 3 p.m. on a Wednesday afternoon, they can gather inside a car while driving from Black Mentor's place, Wisconsin, before I twist the American word, to somewhere else as long as the conversation is Christ. As long as his name is what they're gathering for, that place. That is the gathering of the brethren. He did not say gather on Sunday. Sunday, now politics and paganism move Christian worship to Sunday. It's not biblical. There's no place in the Bible where Sunday worship was given to us. And my anger is, I have no problem with you gathering on Sunday. I have a problem with you telling those who are not gathering on Sunday that they are doing bad. I have a problem with that. I have a problem with you judging those who decide that they don't want to gather on a Sunday and be like you. Well, whether you like it or not, as I'm talking to you right now, 1,500 people are watching me on Facebook, 218 on YouTube, 373 uh, on Instagram, 906 on TikTok, and another 13 on my personal Facebook page. We have 2,500 people gathering here, more than the average church in Nigeria. No, I, I don't think the churches in Lagos that can gather 2,500 people, I don't think they are more than 20 in Lagos of today. That 2,500 people will sit down. They are no more than 20. And we have more than 2,500 people gathering here. So if somebody commonizes this and says, this is not the gathering of the bread, that person is mad, he's a lunatic. Because Christ said two or more. We don't need 1,500 on Facebook. All I need is me and my daughter. Is enough. The moment the name is mentioned, Yahushua, it becomes the gathering of the brethren. Even if I turned off all the phones, I have three daughters, one son, one wife, Six people in the house. In order to gather brethren. 
Listen to the instruction from Christ so that your pastor will not be deceiving you. He said, Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. So we have six people in this family. If we gather, have we not met Christ's instruction? Have we? Have we? Have we? Uncle, have we? Your mind is not here. What do I see? Have we? Uh All you need is two people. Two people and his name. Finish. Look at someone beside you and tell him in your meiji. Two people and his name is all you need. You don't need to go and submit yourself to the small pox of religion because you want to gather with the bread. Somebody said, um, when they go to church, on my Facebook page, when he goes to church, he has this feeling. Let me tell you, when I finish preaching every Sunday, I have a feeling nobody else can represent. I feel that God has just finished using me. You feel whatever your mind puts in you. Let me tell you something. There was a time when cobwebs were seen as healing, to have healing powers. If you had a wound, people used to leave cobwebs on their walls because anytime somebody had a wound, it's the cobweb they would put on the wound. Right? So imagine you just hit and fell and bumped your leg and you saw a cobweb. What would you see? Jesus. Sure. You, what would you see? You see? Back then. Thank God. Ah, okay, we'll see cobweb. Abby? Today, if you see cobweb, what do you feel? Do you feel the same way? Your mind is what projects your feelings to you. You understand what I'm saying? There are many things you feel are wrong because your mind was trained to see them as wrong. And there are many things you see as right, your mind tells you to see them as right. So, at the end of the day, it is what you feed your mind that will determine your reality. Your mind is a projection, an astral projection of your subconscious. That is why a British woman would not draw a man with flowing agbada with three women wearing the same color of his agbada as a rich man. Because her mind does not project that. And the question for you this morning is, what does your mind project? That feeling you feel, you will get it if you train your mind to obey Christ and gather the two people you need. The same person said to me, he said, eh, but why was Christ preaching in the temple? My problem is scripture is balanced. In as much as scripture can look by us, scripture is a very balanced book. The problem is you don't read the balance. So it never has alignment. Let me read a scripture to you. First of all, the temple that Christ went to preach in was not a church room, and neither was it a representation of a church. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. Yahushua was leaving the temple grounds. The disciples pointed out to the various temple buildings. But he responded, you see all these buildings, I tell you the truth, they will be completely demolished. Scripture has its moral, literal, allegorical, and anagogical translations. The allegory of this is not just the building, but the whole of religion will be demolished. Now we are at a juncture where we have the likes of Peter Obi. Do I have Peter Obi fans in the building here? Supporters, supporters, raise your hand. Because I run a show every Tuesday called Clash of the Supporters. I'm not going to say much here. But Peter Obi supporters, if you're a Peter Obi supporter, I'm as neutral as possible. Can I see your hands in the air? You are what you consume. God bless you. Peter Obi supporters in the house? If you're not a Peter Obi supporter, there's nothing wrong. It's, the message today is Peter Obi because Peter Obi went to a church service. And I want to interpret it to you both scripturally and historically. You see, 
According to the First Amendment of the United States of America, ratified in 1791, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting free exercise thereof according to the American Constitution. But we all know the phrase separation of church and state does not appear in the U.S. Constitution. Church and state. The concept is largely Christian because only Christians have churches or mostly Christians. Have, there's the Church of Satan. There's some other churches that are non-Christian. But church and state. The concept is largely Christian and the religious and political powers in society are clearly distinct. Though both claim people's loyalty. The state claims your loyalty, requires it, needs it. The church claims your loyalty. Both of them are forms of government, especially in Nigeria. Right now, I can clearly say that the church is richer than the government. Right now. Because the church is where people put the wealth, both of government and of the masses. The average person who goes to church goes there to also contribute out of their wealth. That is why you see big churches and small schools. That is why you see big churches and no hospitals. People literally drop on the floor and pass away from things that could have been avoided if there was the money for that church was used to build a hospital. I'm going somewhere. Now, before the advent of Christianity, separate religions and political orders were not clearly defined in most civilizations. People worshipped the gods of the particular state in which they lived. Meaning if you were born into, though there was no Islam, Islam came 500 years after Christianity, but assuming you were born into a Muslim state, you'd be Muslim, a Buddhist state, you'd be Buddhist. Or whatever God they worship in your state. Religion, therefore, before Christianity came, was a branch a department of the state it was not part of the state it was merely a department however when it came to the jewish people religion clearly became the government hello as the jews left egypt according to biblical literature they established a religious theocratic government. And the books of Moses, the Pentateuch, or the first five books of Moses, clearly depicted that. We have Numbers, we have Leviticus, we have Deuteronomy, and so on and so forth. And the selection of leadership structure of society down to where your toilet should be was all defined by religion all of it you cannot have your toilet in your house because the scripture says so your toilet must be on the outskirts of the town now the law of Israel created a theocratic government based on God. God selected kings. God, when he was done with the king, threw them out. This can also be seen in Islam to this day when the Sharia law of the Holy Quran is the basis of the government legal structure. Now, I want us to read a scripture together. And I'm going to read this in the original language it was written. And that is the Greek language. And it says, Takeseros 
Kesserai Keta to Theus to Theo. I'll say that again. Ta Keseros Keserai Keta to Theus Theo. Keseros Caesar. Keserai to Caesar. Ta Theus of God to Theo to God. Ta Keseros Keserai to Caesar Caesars. To God gods. The things of Caesar give to Caesar. The things of God give to God. Do I have somebody with me today working with me? Christ, as much as possible, tried to create a distinction between the state and the faith. Many people don't understand the significance of this particular statement. Because Christ lived in a society that was determined by religion. But inside the religious state fusion, Christ created a separation. Even inside a theocratic government, there must be Keseros for Caesar to Theo for God. But I must teach you today that mixing religion with politics is not outlawed. It is not advised, but it is not outlawed. The abuse of it is dangerous. But when you have a system like Nigeria, and you have such powerful religious interference and influence, there must be a juncture where the two meet. Keserai and Theos at one point have to meet. And that point in Nigeria's political history is now. Those 100,000 structures, 100,000 Sita structures that as far as I'm concerned are useless and will end up as nightclubs and cinemas in the future must at least count for something. Let it go down that before they entered uselessness completely, there was one use they brought them to. And that is the creation of a possibility of selling the right candidate Peter B was the one that went to church. The church in Nigeria for the first time in history should come together and choose a candidate. A candidate of conscience. A candidate of wisdom. A candidate whose hands are not stained by the blood of Nigeria's drained resources. A candidate whose integrity is clearly visible. I am not saying that candidate is Peter Obi. If the church decides that it's Tinubu or Atiku, it's up to the church. But the church should have one voice. Because those useless 
100,000, 50,000, 150,000 theater buildings should at least do one thing. Give Nigeria hope. You can't pray that hope. The prayers, every day Nigeria gets worse and they are praying. And they are fasting. And they are casting. And they are binding. If somebody was born or somebody matured, let's say he got old enough to work by themselves in 2010 and the person lived till 2022 and died this year, will that person say God improved anything in Nigeria? The prayers, the fasting, the buildings, the structures, to what end? One of the biggest problems I had with NSAS was because it was a gathering of musicians that we've not seen for many years coming to show us that, hey guys, I can still rap, I can still sing, I can still dance a little bit. Because the grievances that were brought forward, which could have translated into the formation of a proper youth structure, ended up turning into a concert. And the next year, they wanted to have another concert. The value was lost somewhere in the gray areas. And very soon, the same people who you were fighting against were able to step in, separate people, give some people money. Before you knew it, everybody, everybody was, everything was sorted. What's meant to be in your mind cannot become reality unless you are intentional about your reality. Your mind. Open that door because of the breeze, please. Your mind contains an abstract picture. Have you ever tried to draw something and then it's some, you're, looking, you're seeing it somehow in your mind, but you just can't get it the way it is in your mind on the paper? If I could put a flash drive inside your ear and download it, I'll get a perfect picture, more perfect than what you've drawn, right? Your mind is so powerful that there are many things in your mind that you cannot bring forth. That is why they call things brain children, a brain child. Until we have the right mindset, people will tell you That religion and church should not mix. And I agree. But in Nigeria, where religion and church are the two, sorry, um, where religion and government are the two most powerful forces. We did not invest in education. We did not invest in hospitals. We did not invest in um, infrastructure, development. All we invested in is religion. All we have is religion. It must count for something. If you go to the Old Testament, but let me warn you, I'm always very clever with reading the Old Testament. Because the Old Testament was a different ball game. And before I go into the Old Testament and start setting examples from the Old Testament, let me first warn you about things in the Old Testament. Many of you did not know this. Numbers 31, 18. Only the young girls who are virgins may live. You may keep them for yourselves. Not for your sons. For yourselves. Oh, maybe we should read in context so you understand why they got to keep the virgins. So, Numbers 31, verse 16. These are the very ones who followed Balaam's advice and caused the people of Israel to rebel against the Lord at Mount Peor. They are the ones who caused the plague to strike the Lord's people. So by all the boys and all the women who have had Jim Jim with man. Only the young girls are you to keep for yourselves. It was not against scripture for you to go to war 
and come home and find a nice virgin. Virgins were part of the spoils when you plunder. When Abraham, for instance, went to the Kopesh ton Basilion, that is the slaughter of the kings, they, they took women, they took children, they became their slaves and their... It's perfectly scriptural. So understand that that Old Testament, before you open it, understand that it's very complex. So you cannot just carry and paste from Old Testament. Just remember the kind of things that were happening in the Old Testament. So let me, let me help you a little bit more. For those of you that don't know Old Testament, let me read more to you. Deuteronomy 25, 11. If two men are fighting and the wife of one of them comes to rescue the husband and then reaches out and seizes him by his private part, you must cut her hand. Is there in your Bible? Read it yourself. Deuteronomy 25, verse 11. You know, sometimes two men are fighting. The wife wants to come and say, God goes to grab the other one by the block. One name. Not to cut her hand. Though. It's there in the Bible. I want to show you more. Leviticus 19, 19. Keep my decrees. The Lord instructed. Do not mate different kinds of animals and do not plant your feed, your field with two kinds of seed. Do not wear clothing woven of two different materials. As you are like this, you're already breaking God's law. Anybody that is wearing jeans, jeans here, pull out your pockets. Oh, you're even lucky. Pull out your own pockets. I think it's for jeans. You have jeans on? Yeah. The pocket of your jeans is already made of different materials. So you're already sin, committing sin by wearing jeans. According to the old law. If you have a pair of jeans, bring me a clean pair of jeans. Do not wear cloth woven from two different materials. Some of you, the material in your cloth reach eight. Amen. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Oh, perfect. No, no, no. It's even good like this. Uh, I don't need to go far. Just look at the jeans. See this material? Can I see it's different from this denim? Even the material of the tag is woven into the. This is like nylon. This is like cotton. And this is whatever else it is. These are two clearly different materials. Are they not different materials? So by wearing jeans, you're already seeing it, according to the Old Testament. I'll take you a little bit further. Work with me. In Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 28, the Old Testament says, If a man happens to meet a virgin who is not pledged to be married, and he forcefully takes her. You know what that is. I don't want to scatter the algorithm of social media. He forces her to do it. And they are discovered. He shall pay her father 50 shekels of silver and he must marry the young woman for he has violated her and he can never divorce her as long as he lives. Oh, wow. Imagine we're in the Old Testament now. Uh-uh, if you don't marry all this, you'll find Nigerian actresses since. Nobody to carry. <laughs> Nobody to catch her for one bad corner, do one bad thing, go pay her father a bright price and you know even if you divorce her again. Now, so she take down your wife. That is what obtained. Imagine the trauma of having to live with the person who violated you. So before you go to this book to start quoting absolutes, read the book first. Understand the hermeneutics of Old Testament scripture as well as the context therein and then the literal moral allegorical and anagogical translations before you jump in and quote a sound understand the time when that psalm was written another example is deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 20 if however the charge is true and proof of the young woman's virginity cannot be found
she shall be brought to the door of her father's house and the man of the, of the town shall stone her to she buy. Is there anybody? Go and read it. So we are going to borrow scripture from where did they stone non-virgin? From where you know if you wear jeans? From where if they do you strong team, man, carry you do you strong team. You know, go come social media, go cry, now your husband be that too. You don't find husband. He said, oh, 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 he took me to the club, then when we're coming from the club, he took me to his house. I said, no, 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 he still did it, you don't marry you. Now make you pay your bride price, now I remain. Amen? Amen? That was what was in scripture. So we're going to this book to borrow things, but I want you to understand the dynamics of that book. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, for rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. This is Samuel talking to Saul. You have rejected God, God has rejected you as king. As simple as ABC. God chose the king. And God used the prophets to remove the kings. 1 Samuel chapter 28 verse 15. Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? This is after even Samuel has died. Saul was still looking for answers. When to meet somebody that will bring Samuel's spirit back. I am in great distress. Saul said, the Philippines are fighting against me and God has departed from me. He no longer answers me, either by prophets or by dreams. So I have called you to tell me what to do. That is how powerful the prophets were in those days, in the courts of kings, because even in death, they were still sought. Amen. Sit well. 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 1. The Lord said to, sent Nathan to David. When he came to him, he said, There are two men in a certain town, one rich and the other poor. You know the story. The man who had just one sheep. God used Nathan to tell David of the punishment that was going to come to his household because of the evil that he did. Amen. Prophets in the house of kings. Speaking truth to power regarding the political situation of their societies. I'll take this a little further. If we can go to the book of 1 Kings chapter 1. This was even scarier. Then Nathan went to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, and asked her, Haven't you heard that Haggit's son, Adonijah, has made himself king, and our Lord David doesn't even know about it? Let's imagine this. Nathan is a prophet. Nathan can see that something is going on that is wrong. Nathan goes to meet the preferred wife of the king, politics. Amen. And goes to tell her some snitchings. Hello, is this not snitching? Bathsheba does not know that Adonijah has declared himself king. David does not know that Adonijah has declared himself king. Adonijah was rightful, was the right, according to, he was the rightful king. So here's a prophet going to snitch. Of course, with good intentions, but snitching nonetheless. Right? Hey, she don't hear, see? <laughs> I don't need that one crown itself, King. Eh? She, you know. Now let's continue reading this. Work with me, work with me, work with me. I'll teach you scripture like you've never learned it before. He now went on to say, If you want to save your life and the life of your son Solomon, follow my advice. 
Go at once to King David and say to him, My lord the king, didn't you make a vow and say to me, Your son Solomon will surely be the next king and will sit at the throne? Why then has Adonijah become king? And while you are talking with him, I will come in and confirm everything you have said. Bam bam la snitching. You guys don't understand the story. You don't understand it. You're not understanding the gravity. Okay. Are you well dressed? Are you act as my wife? Or my mother? No. You come. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, you come. This is my son, Solomon. I am, sorry, this is Solomon. I am Prophet Nathan. You are Bathsheba. <laughs> so you're just minding your business. Just be minding your business. You just be minding your business. I'm not going to say, hey, hey Bathsheba. Ah, do you really want to protect this, your son, Solomon? Hey, do you know that Adonijah has gone to declare himself king? Now, now, now. Go to the king, David. That is King David there. That is King David there. Now go to King David and tell King David this, 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 and this. And while you are talking to him, I will join you. Not be planning that. So you go and be talking to the king. While you are talking to me, I will just show, like normal me, they show. They don't go no say we plan out. Amen? Because if they did plan, they could have just walked to the king together. They don't want him to look as neutral and normal as possible, like it wasn't any big deal. Right? You can go and do what you are doing. So, listen to this. First Kings chapter 1, verse 15. So Bathsheba went into the king's bedroom. He was very old now, and Abishag was taking care of him. Abishag was the young virgin. Historians place her age at about 12. The king could not do anything with her because he was too old. Not because he didn't want to, because he was just too old. Anyway, that's not part of the story. So, Bathsheba went into the king's bedroom. He was very old. Abishag, the most beautiful virgin in the whole Israel, was taking care of him. Bathsheba bowed down before the king. What can I do for you? He asked her. She replied, my Lord made a vow before the Lord your God when you said to me, your son Solomon will surely be the next king and will sit at my throne. But instead, Adonijah has made himself king. And my Lord, the king, does not even know about this. He has sacrificed many cattle, fatted cows and sheep. And he has invited all the king's sons to attend the celebration. He invited Abiathar, the priest, and Joab, the commander of the army. But he did not invite your servant Solomon. And now, my lord, the king, all Israel is waiting for you to announce who will be the king after you. If you do not act, my son Solomon and I will be treated as criminals as soon as the lord and my lord, the king, has spied. While she was still speaking, perfect timing, Nathan the prophet arrived. Like he didn't know anything about it. The king's officials told him, Nathan the prophet is here to see you. Nathan understood the politics of the town. He understood what was happening and what was about to happen. He understood the gravity which Solomon, which David was unaware of because he was too old. And Solomon was too young. And Bathsheba was just a woman. But Nathan, being a prophet, not be this guy, yeah, yeah, prophet, where we get these days, we no see ordinary COVID. Hello? The prophets where we get today, they're not see COVID. Come be said, they won't see waiting God plan. And how Adonijah won't hijack waiting God plan. A good prophet who was not thinking of the money he will make. He was thinking of the King David's plan and his vow. And he was thinking of Bathsheba and her son. Selflessness. 
Not how Solomon was going to give him more tithe. And the king went. Connived, even though that's a strong word, but I like to use it because it was used for a good reason. With Bathsheba and established Solomon's throne by playing politics in the palace of the king. Where are our Nathans that speak truth to power? Ask somebody today, where is Nathan? The Muslim world will come together and agree on a candidate. It better be your candidate because it doesn't look like the church will come together on anything. Play this message for your general overseer. Play this message. Send it to them. Tell them that Nigeria needs Nathan to get up. Where Nigeria matter don't reach now, if Nathan no put mouth, Solomon and Bathsheba go by. I am speaking allegorically, presenting an anagogy to you. Where Nigeria don't reach today, if Nathan no put mouth, look at someone beside you and say to them, tell Nathan to put mouth. Say it like you mean it. Nigeria is at that verge. Tell Nathan to put him out. The biggest Nathan in this country is silent because his boy is not the Solomon. His boy is the let me not say Adonijah, but one of the sons of the king that was rejected. It's not even Adonijah because the throne even belonged to Adonijah. The throne not even belonged to this one first. We'll discuss later. Do I have a witness, my people? Nathan in Nigeria today is not happy. Because the one that he was trying to put there, the king did not vow it, and God did not instruct it. And since he has lost out, Nathan is quiet. Nathan, you better, better start talking. Nathan, you better start talking. Because if you don't speak truth to power, but Sheba and Solomon are going to buy. I don't know who it is that I'm speaking to today. Christ, Christ tried as much as possible to separate the church from the state. As much as he could, he tried to. But Nigeria has gone back to a situation where the church is now the state. And Matthew chapter 22 verse 21 is so clear. It says, Ta keseros keserai keta to theus theo. What is Caesar's belongs to Caesar. And what is God's belongs to God. But when Caesar and God have mixed up, God will not keep quiet, and neither should his prophets. If there are any true prophets, some true prophets have gotten up, one of the guys you don't like, one of the guys who has many scandals out there, I'm not going to mention his name, he's the only one that has spoken up, and mentioned the name. Some have played the game by inviting to their uh, pulpit. Some have done the uh, dance to this side, dance to this side. Nigeria is not. Nathan did not go and play Kurukere 
with Bathsheba. He told her how it was going to be. He said, you go into his room. Give him the story. I will meet you there and I will back you up. Bathsheba spoke. Nathan stood up with her. Nigeria will never amount to anything if our Nathans continue being quiet. And if you look at the story of the prophet Nathan, he always spoke truth to power. He was the same one that God sent with the message of that same Bathsheba. Say, so what do you do, Bathsheba husband? God will punish you for him. But that same Nathan still went back through that same Bathsheba. To secure Solomon's crown. Nathan was a man who spoke the truth. When Bathsheba did bad, he spoke. When it was time for Bathsheba to do well, he spoke. Nigerian Nathans, why are you silent? Where all of a sudden is your microphone? You have failed us in every ramification. You prayed that Nigeria would be better. Every day Nigeria got worse. You held crusades and gathered people at tabernacles of all sorts of nonsenses and nothing improved. You prophesied that the dollar was going to go up. Sorry, the Naira was going to go up. The only Naira that is going up in Nigeria today is Naira Mali. The only Naira that is rising is Naira Mali. It is time for you to prevent Adonijah from taking power. It is time now for you to do the work of Nathan. Your churches are still going to fold up. Those buildings are still going to turn to nightclubs and cinemas. Those buildings are still going to turn to schools and whatever use the society has of them in the future like it's happening in Europe. But for the time being, let them count for something. Let them count for something. 400 people are watching me on YouTube alone and 1,600 on Facebook. Just YouTube and Facebook, 2,000 people. Instagram alone, 368. TikTok, about 100. Even my personal Facebook, 13 people. The crowd here is enough to make this message circulate. The crowd that has gathered today is enough to ensure that Nathan gets the message and speaks. Look at someone beside you and say it with a loud voice. Nathan, speak! Nathan, speak! Talk! We have suffered enough. I'm not saying the candidate is Peter Obi. The candidate might be anybody else you choose. But choose wisely. Stop choosing because one candidate will feather your nest. Stop choosing because one candidate is someone you are close to. Choose for the people. You as bishops and pastors have already failed the people. Let me tell you what your failure would have. Let me tell you if Naso Nathan be, if Naso Nathan they fail. Let me tell you what Nathan would have happened to Nathan. Go with me to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter eighteen and verse twenty-two. To establish verse twenty-two, I'll start from verse twenty. But any prophet who falsely claims to speak in my name or speak in the name of another God must buy. But you may wonder, how will we know whether or not a prophecy is from the Lord? If the prophet speaks in the Lord's name but his prediction does not happen 
or come true, you will know that the Lord did not give that message. That prophet has spoken without God's authority and needs not to be feared. If Nathan spoke and what he spoke did not come to pass, in for don't chop stone since Nathan will not be alive to sit down and plan with Bathsheba if when he had gone to give David the message about the sheep, the poor man and the rich man, if that message had not come to pass, therefore don't give her a stone chop. Our own Nathans, they don't they lie, give us. They don't they miss road, give us. Ordinary Bible, they don't know how to read it, they don't know how to interpret it, they are gathering people for the sake of money. The bad child has his own day. This is your day. You have failed to be Nathans in prophecy. You have failed to be Nathans in accountability. You have failed to be Nathans in truth and structure. At least be Nathan now by ensuring that Bathsheba and the true king are not quite unnecessary. Be the Nathan that will stand up and let power change hands in the right direction. Do not continue being a tool of oppression and manipulation because it, it fuels your purpose of extorting the people. Yesterday I went somewhere. A friend of mine bought three Lamborghini Huracans. I was there with Baby Freeze. Baby Freeze, were you not there? Mm -hmm. Did we not enter the container together? Yes, I entered the Lambo. He said he entered the Lambo. It's on my YouTube. I can't lie. It's there on my Instagram, my YouTube, my Facebook. I'm sure somebody. And one guy came there. They are not my cars. Will not be me get Lambo before when I begin to look me with any kind of eye. People are now saying, Daddy Freeze, is this what you should be doing with your money? Why are you not building factories? I was so angry. So if I have money to buy Lamborghini, I will not buy the Lamborghini. I will build factory. If I build the factory, you go patronize them. How many of the things where would they do you patronize? Ordinary to come and pay and use my platform when I would they want to use them for free. You can't talk. My platform is a factory. Oh, you did not know? Is a factory. Come and patronize this. Your pastors are black buying Gulfstream. One pastor has more than one a, a, a plane and helicopter. But if Daddy Freeze buys ordinary Lambo, we go begin the we go cry tire. That's your mindset. You look at Daddy Freeze and you are very willing to call him out. Meanwhile, the Nathans that have failed, you were supposed to don't chop stones since they're still there when they do yes sir, yes sir, praise the Lord under them. Let me tell you, any Nathan when no talk now go chop breakfast. He sure. Nobody me talk him, na baba. They go chop breakfast. Where this Nigeria they go? Where this Nigeria they go? If Nathan no ready talk. Nathan go chop break fast. Someone say I be Nathan now. I don't know how to reach Asso Rock. If you carry me, if you drop me for Abuja Airport and I want to go Asso Rock, I go begin to ask question. But your old Nathans, they know the place. Some of them have president's phone number. Some of them have governor's phone number. Governors are their sons in the Lord. You are telling me to be Nathan. I feel near the gate. The best way I feel to be seen as a talker like this me they watch him. I know be Nathan. I be small prophet where they speak truth for Nigeria. The real Nathans. You know, you, you know read the scripture. As the king's wife was with him in his innermost chamber, Nathan knocked the door and they opened. You want to tell me, say, if Nathan reached the gates of the palace, they go ask him questions, say, hey, Nathan, where are you going? Person with the waka go king room. You know, do you know how those palaces used to be? You go waka 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 finally reach the place then you can't reach the king's room the guards allow you knock door i think the time is now 
And I want to end the service with a prayer. Heavenly Father, the nation is in a dire situation. Things are hard, life's confusing, everything is not the way it's supposed to be. Help our prophets rise. The truth needs to be spoken in the places of power. Either give those who have access to power the courage or raise those who will speak and be courageous. The system of church in Nigeria has done nothing but fail us up until now. We are not more moral than the unchurched. We are not wealthier than the unchurched. We're not healthier than the unchurched. We don't live better lives than the unchurched. But despite the failings of the church in Nigeria, let it count for something as Nigeria makes a dramatic U-turn from the state of perpetual hopelessness to a situation where hope becomes a reality. This I ask, O Lord, in the name above every other name, Yahushua HaMashiach. And the good people in the house said a big Amen. 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 Thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, share the message. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Sadly, you cannot share the message because the message will disappear uh, the moment the live goes on or off. If you're on Facebook, share the message. YouTube, you can copy the message and share it. Esther Amorui, I greet you. Ada Blessing. Uh, Deborah, are you still with us? I saw her earlier on. Uh, is Simply Vic here? I saw Buki Sote. Henry the Great, I saw him earlier on. Lisa Luque, I saw her too. Amen, amen. Yeah. I really like to appreciate all of you who have been with us up until now for all the support you gave us, especially towards our charity project, Shukbo Vaughn. Bless you. Shukbo, I think I owe you 2K from the last charity. I told you to a 1K. I don't know how much it is. Send me a DM. Let me send you the money, please. I didn't carry any cash on me. Daniela Maku, bless you, my sister. How are you doing? Um, so Shukbo uh, gave me the 1K to give those people who helped us carry stuff. I don't know how much it is. Send me a DM. Let me send it to you. I appreciate you. Go to my room and sit down there. Thank you so much. Now we need to talk about our charity situations. Those of you who supported us, Thank you so much. Um, we really struggled with this last charity that we did two days ago. Uh, all we had was a little above 700,000 Naira or about 700,000 Naira. Black Mentor alone brought 500K. I know that Nigeria is... <laughs> I know that Nigeria is going through crisis right now and we appreciate that. But we still need to do our own quota as a church. Our charity is once a month, and we're going to begin to announce it just two weeks before the date. We don't collect offering. Right now, if you noticed, I've stopped bringing sick people. We are just trying to do whatever it is we can so that we do not get overwhelmed as a church. Um... For all of you who have supported us in the past, uh, Bukola says, Ah, Bukola, I've not greeted you. How are you, my sister? She says, How often do you do it? Once every month towards the end of the month. We should be doing more, but the state at which everybody's pocket is, let us just be calming down. 
Um, uh, what else? Thank you all so much. And a very special thank you to Black Mentor. Black Mentor, are you here? Can somebody tag him? Black Mentor. He alone came up with 500,000. Uncle? We have yeah, 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 yeah. Inside there. And Femme? Anytime they are doing construction work in the house, I like him sitting in one place. I can't shout. Oh, yes, Black Mentor is here. Please, a big round of applause to him for the love and the support. Um, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, brother. Brother, he's right there. Big shout out to you. Thank you so much. Without Black Mentor, we know if we do charity of 200 and something thousand, we would just go there and look like the whole church. But because he came through, we're able to feed 400 people. Now, let me tell you, now that dollar has gone up and everything is going to follow it, we will not be able to feed 400 people with 700,000 or 700 and plus thousand next time. Because it's not just feeding. Okay, Taze Bot is telling me that it's not just feeding, that the bulk of the money also goes to getting... You just watch the videos, personal hygiene things, soap, um, cartons of noodles, processed food, sanitary towels, pampers. Just watch. You'll see the way they were offloading things from the bus. We actually had to hire a bus, take the bus there, and, and it, it, was, it was awesome. Thank you so much for that. God bless you. The second person I like to use this opportunity to appreciate is no other than Pastor Toby Adeboega. Can somebody please tag Pastor Toby Adeboega? As one of the most expensive charities. The most expensive charity we have done in recent times was supported by Pastor Toby Adeboega. Tag him at Toby Adeboega. Tag him, tag him. Skills acquisition for boys and senior boys, single boys, boys, and young boys who are being rehabilitated and reintroduced back into the society. Yes, yes. So um, he brought a million naira, and that was what we were able to use. Um, to buy equipment and, and, and do that and that was the previous month a very big shout out to him he's always always supporting us always in every way or form so um, big shout out to Pastor Toby baby freeze where are you? oh yeah are they watching with hawk eye? you know they grease it down for one place So thank you so much, Toby Adeboega, Pastor Toby. Uh, let me see if he's available. Toby. Uh, let me call him and thank him. I know these days he has been running services every Sunday, but I'm not sure he is... We still spoke last night, but I don't know if right now if he is in service or maybe the wealth nation is doing something. Uh, the reason why we used his own um, support for the empowerment of the young boys and the men who are going through rehabilitation is because the theme of his church is more so... Um, nation building wealth creation and when you empower people the, the guy who is leading the young men they are got there learned how to make shoes 
Oh, okay, he's in service. He just sent me a message. We are talking about... Okay, so I sent him a message. I said we're all here talking about him and uh, we're all showing our appreciation. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Oh yes, he's in service. I didn't know because normally I think his service starts a little later than ours. Let me check. Uh, Toby. Okay, but he's not live. Okay, he's not live, but maybe he's in service. You guys are right. So, he is live in service. Uh -uh. How come I can't see him live? I'm on his page. I can see things of 16 hours ago. 12, oh, okay, yeah, 12 minutes. Okay, then. Thank you all so much once again for the support. Black Mentor, you are loved and appreciated. Thank you so much for supporting us. The poor people who are able to get fed three days ago will forever be grateful and it will count to you as a service towards God. Nobi me tokam, na Bible tokam, Matthew chapter 25, 31 to 41. Read it yourself and be blessed. Thank you all once again for gathering today. I love and appreciate you and look forward to having you again sometime soon. Uh, we're moving into a brand new month. Uh, I think tomorrow, um, the new month starts tomorrow. May it be a month of his direction, clarity in every sphere of your life. May it be the month that you dedicated more time to get to know him. May it be the month where the Nathans of Nigeria start to speak up and speak truth to power. May Yahweh bless you all and look forward to teaching you during the week and having our usual late night conversations. I love you guys. I didn't block a single, I didn't even fight with a single person throughout today. Now, wow, today must be a good day. Take care, God bless, see you next Sunday and throughout the week. I'm Daddy Freeze, convener of the Free the Sheeple Movement and leader of the Free Nation in Christ. I wish you God's speed, God's grace, and God's knowledge. <laughs>